Tim and Gar back with Rescue Methods. In this segment, we kind of want to talk a little bit about some of the tools that we have uh, or that Gar's ladder company carries uh, as a self-contained bag. And it, I, they pretty much call it their lock bag or force entry bag. Is that right? Yep. Force entry bag, hydrogen bag, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, the tool itself came in a bag, you know, from the factory the way we bought it. Mm -hmm. But we, uh, we made this bag ourselves that basically carries everything we need to do to address a commercial type door. Uh, it's gonna carry every tool we need. It's gonna have our hydram or our, you know, our PFT. Mm -hmm. It's gonna have our K tool set up. It's got our, uh, the tools we do to negotiate panic bars and it's gonna have our A tool. So everything we're gonna need basically to get through some manner of commercial door in a through the lock fashion or a minimally invasive fashion, we're gonna carry in this kit. That's a great idea. And the, you know, when it comes to the HFT rabbit tool, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it. This happens to be one of my favorite tools. Um, the thing is just so versatile. It's a lightweight tool. There's not a whole lot of things that you can't, that it won't do in terms of uh, force and doors. And it makes, uh, it makes one person a very functional, forcible entry machine in my book. Absolutely. I mean, typically this tool right here can get through a fairly well fortified outward swinging commercial door without mm -hmm. any problem. Um, applies a lot of force, gives you a nice gap. Uh, you might have to follow it up with a halligan to actually make the pop, but it's going to do all that gapping, take all the beating and prying and the, the heavy work out of it. And uh, if you have a commercial situation where you're doing a lot of doors, mm -hmm. this thing really saves you a lot of energy when you can go with the, uh, with the hydroram or the rabbit tool out in front and just get all those gaps made and one guy makes a nice easy pop on that door. I agree 100% and, and so much so that a lot of times uh, it, when, one of the things that I will do is the tillerman and our tiller guy usually does the outside rear as a, one of our first end duties. I'll put a, a, a strap on, the, on ours and uh, I'll carry it with me when on my first trip back when I go to the rear of the structure to in case I need to to force any doors on the back side. Uh, you know, it's lightweight. I can carry multiple things on my first trip, and it gives me a lot of flexibility and, and functionality in the rear in terms of laddering, forcible entry. I can get all that done in several minutes. Absolutely. I mean, this is a standing tool assignment on our ladder companies. Uh, any commercial assignment, any high-rise assignment, this is a tool that's, that's expected to be brought by the forcible entry guy. So he will have this kit with him. And um, as we progress through that building, you know, you get into a high-rise or commercial situation, you might have a hallway full of doors. You need to clear that building. This thing really they comes They carry the, uh, the standard A tool. Looks like a small halligan. The, uh, the primary difference is that it's got a lock puller on the, uh, in the ads portion. It's got a nice A cut to it. I've seen some guys even try to modify their halligans in that fashion. You ever mm -hmm. seen that? Yeah, I have. Um, they, they'll take the ads into their, their halligan and try to make that V cut, put that good uh, cutting edge on it, um, which I'm sure you know works out great. I haven't yeah. done it personally. I'm sure no. it works out wonderful. Um, where this tool is primarily used, at, at least for us, is on a, um, on a deadbolt or a lock cylinder mm -hmm. that is very pronounced away from the door, something that the, that the K tool cannot negotiate. Um, take a residential deadbolt. Residential deadbolts stick out about an inch uh -huh. from the door. That's where we're going to use this tool here. All right, very simple to use. You're going to place this over top your deadbolt, this, the uh, A portion of the tool. You're going to strike this in a downward fashion with a halligan or a flathead axe, mm -hmm. and then simply pry the lock cylinder right out. It takes that big pronounced deadbolt, takes it right out of the picture, then we can go with our key tools, manipulate the lock, and we're right in. Really a, a nice tool and we really, really use it a lot um, for those residential deadbolts that are very pronounced away from the door. Sure. I think one, one important point to, to make note of is the, the difference with the A tool versus the K tool in terms of pulling lock cylinders is that most of the time when we talk about utilizing the K tool or the R tool that we apply the, the force in the same direction as the force of the strike. Mm -hmm. In this case, uh, it's directly opposite. So we strike down this way and we actually end up prying up to gain the leverage on, off the back side of the tool head. So I think it's, a, it's an important point to note, uh, just some subtle differences and uh, gives you a couple different options for prying as well as uh, a pike that can be useful if you're trying to use maybe a, a lightweight door or something, uh, you can baseball swing it, you know, hollow core interior door or something Absolutely. like that. 
Um, a lot of people have called this uh, you know, an officer's tool. Uh -huh. um, you know, they've, the officer has carried a tool similar to this, very small. Like I said, the you know the uh, the fork end is real nice for your for your hollow core. If somebody's got you know just an interior door um, lock, you need to do a light force, or even like we said, that door in between the garage and the home. You know, very light. You don't want to use your big halligan. You can use something a little bit smaller like this. Try to do a little, uh, at least amount of damage. So it has many uses, but what primarily what we use it for is those residential deadbolts. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, continuing through, we, uh, since we're talking about pulling locks, we might as well talk about the K tool. Absolutely. This is your typical K tool. All right. Now, what this is used for is pulling commercial lock cylinders uh, that stick out about a half inch or less from the from the door frame. Mm -hmm. You can see this is the clearance that you're going to have on this tool. Uh, figuring the lock face is up against this area, and here's your cutting jaws. It's called a K tool, of course, because the jaws are formed into the into the letter K. Um, so this will only work on lock cylinders that basically will fit in this tool. So if you mm -hmm. try to slide this over your deadbolt that you have you know, at home, it's not going to fit. So it's got to be able to fit completely over the lock cylinder. And it works basically on the same premise uh, as this tool, only it's going to be a, a two-piece operation. Sure. And uh, utilizing the two-piece, we would take a normal standard size halligan, slide it in the back. Our striking force is down, and our force application is also in the downward force on the back side of the tool. I think it's an, uh, an important point to note. One modification that has that the manufacturer has made is the <clears throat> exactly what Gar was talking about is the depth of the jaw. They've modified that a little bit, and and now they've called they're calling it the R tool. Right. So the R tool is essentially a much uh, a considerably larger version of the K tool. Again, very useful. Uh, through the lock techniques are great. We've utilized them uh, several times um, over over my short. <clears throat> tenure and uh, it gives us that advantage of once again non-destructive forcible entry and the nice thing about a K tool also is these uh, these cutting edges are replaceable mm -hmm. you just back these Allen screws out you can buy these right from the from the from the manufacturer because uh, these things will get dinged up they'll get you, know, sure. you know, they'll get especially if you're dealing with a, a, a steel um, lock cylinder as opposed to an aluminum lock cylinder mm -hmm. it'll start to ding up these uh, jaws and you won't get that good grab or that good bite so the maintenance on this is basically, you know, you know, file these edges down. You can see how we keep these filed down real nice, take mm -hmm. any out any mushroom or any chips out of it. And uh, to keep these edges, uh, make sure you've got your good, uh, we have a, you know, a couple sets of replacement jaws we carry so we can swap these out uh, fairly quickly.